Well, the day has come. Crucible Guard, as a more complete faction, has arrived. Up until now in tournaments, we've mainly seen Sevestro as a pivot list. Well, Baldwin and McKay are here, which are their two sweepers. Uh, McKay also can be a little pivoty, and uh, Baldwin can be a little pivoty, but Baldwin can be built very, very well as a sweeper list that's a very dominant, very powerful gun line. And that's what mainly that what this episode is going to be about. There's not a whole lot of uh, gameplay here, but it's going to be talking about Baldwin and what he can do, what to look out for, and how to play around it. So, <clears throat> Baldwin, in a nutshell, he's got all these really cool gun types. He can make two shots a turn. Um, one of his guns is just a spray 10, POW 13, um, cold gun. Another one, the one he starts off with, is a range 12 uh, AOE 4 continuous corrosion gun that also does a little bit of damage. And he has snipe, so add four to all these except for the spray. And he will probably be rotating it. He also has a range 8 momentum gun that can become range 12. And that's, that's a fantastic tool to have. And he also has a range 13 shadow bind gun, which can become range 17. And this that's an amazing tool into battle engines. So his personal output is really good. He makes the switch between weapons using his little arms bearer. And um, the Johnny on the spot is what makes the second ranged attack. Um, as, for, as far as spells and feet go, he has a lot of really cool rules. He has a lot of tools he brings to his list. He has veteran leader friendly faction model just within command. So that's a thing. Um, he has these orders he gives out. And some of them are really... Dang good. One of them is friendly faction models get tactician within his command. Woo! Fantastic. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Uh, his other one, his other really good order is uh, they get dead. Uh, they get the additional dice to hit on ranged attacks for a whole unit. He just hands that out to one of these units. And then the last one, which doesn't get used very often, is reciprocate. So you miss a unit with a ranged attack, and those guys in that unit fire back at you. Um, not that critical that these pieces are defense 12, but it could go, it could go pretty good on the Rocketman. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the back of his card. His spell list is deceleration, hot shot, boundless charge and snipe snipe. Fantastic. Deceleration. It's situationally pretty good depending on how you build them, but not that crazy, uh, with these guys. Cause their armor is not that great. The crucible guard infantry's armor is not that great. Uh, helps for the Vulcan though. Hotshot is great on the Vulcan, and um, Snipe is just his signature little rotation. His feet is prey that gets rotated, kind of like um, uh, Heretic's Trump Arcana, except for it's not triggered like an Arcana. Duh, it's a it's a feat. You just put it out there and it happens. So that's that's more or less him in a nutshell. Now let's talk about why I think. He, He's so scary and why he does such a good job as a sweeper. Basically, I don't know of any list in the game that can just march into all of his gun ranges and live. I I just can't think of any. Um, on math, he should be blowing apart the Slayer spam in in good, good enough numbers to win on attrition or scenario. Um, and that's, that's unheard of uh, for a gun line. The Slayer spam is almost uncrackable. I, I can't think of any gun line in the game right now that can blow those apart, but this can do it. So let's talk about how that works. Um, this is not an optimized list. This Baldwin list is still in process, but the keys to it are the retaliators, which are these two little light jacks over here. Uh, the crucible guard infantry, which are those dudes to the left and the dudes to the right. And a Vulcan is an optional piece, but it brings a lot of tools. And then Baldwin himself. All the work is done by the Crucible Guard Infantry. Um, everything else on the list is more or less a debuff or a gun that has a tool. So we'll, we'll talk about the debuffs first. And then this game is going to be a great example of how to play around the debuffs and how to limit them and how not to just walk up the board and die and wonder what you did wrong. If you're a living model, the Dragon's Breath Rockets are probably all familiar with them because Sevestro and Locke and all the other casters that are out right now run them. Um, it's an AoE 4 that does minus 2 armor and you lose tough to living models specifically. So that's good. The Retaliators, uh, they walk 6 and spray 8. 
This is a very important threat range of 14 because it's what cranks the uh, Crucible Guard infantry up to a million. Um, they have several different shots on their guns. They have a Grievous Wound shot. So if you get hit by their spray, your Grievous Wounds. Woo! Uh, another spray gets rid of clouds. Anything that overlaps the spray, the clouds just uh, disappear, dissipate into nothingness. And then the last spray, which is the one that is more commonly used, is models hit, suffer oil. The Crucible Guard Infantry have a fire type on their gun. They have three different types of shots they can make, because that just seems to be a theme with Crucible Guard. Um, and one of them's fire. So they get boosted damage rolls from these two retaliators, everything that's hit under this, their two sprays. Um, so keep that in mind. That's that's where the boosted damage rolls come from. The next thing is, also the Mice 2 armor can come from the Dragon's Breath Rocket. The Vulcan in this list is doing several different things. Everything within five inches from it and everything that's in the two four inch AOEs that it shoots out each turn. Um, so within five inches of it and within the four inch AOEs, there's three different effects it can choose. One of them is just rust, flat out rust. If you're a construct, minus two armor, suck it. The other one is entropic force. Just <laughs> it's better than grievous wounds. Um, it gets around things like do me three's feet. You just can't have stuff, uh, damage anything removed from it. Um, and the last one is you lose all your immunities. So you're like, hey, I've got this random uh, fire eaters list or whatever, not fire eaters because they're not fire immune, but I've got this random list that's fire immune and, you know, earthborn, earthborn dire trolls. I'm going to ram those into your face and you're not going to know what to do about it. Ha ha ha. He'll just, this stupid Vulcan will plop an AOE four on you next to you or walk within five of you and it threats 13 inches with boundless charge. So that's because it's just base speed six, base speed six giant colossal um but yeah it'll take away those immunities so that the damage from the crucible guard infantry can be done and so that there's not that out um it also has two sprays uh that are 10 inch and i want to say pal 14 so that's that's this list stealth out is that baldwin has a spray the two retaliators have spray and the vulcan has double sprays because the crucible guard infantry in this list have no way of shooting stealth um so AOEs and the sprays are how they deal with stealth, which is something very good to note because the Crucible Guard Infantry are the workhorses. So, Crucible Guard Infantry. Um, they're range 12, POW 11. Uh, they're Rat 5. They go to Rat 6 with Veteran Leader from Baldwin. Um, Prey brings them up to 8. Sacrificing Movement brings them up to 10. So, they're a pretty casual 10 just with Sacrificing Movement, basically. Um, and then they can CRA if they want to to be whatever number they want to be but rat 10 uh with rust or the dragon's breath rocket they go from pow 11 to pow 13 if they want to cra they can they can go to pow 15 really easily with prey they go from 13 to 15 pretty easily so they're usually going to be in the in the 13 to 15 range when they're shooting at you and if the thing's oiled it's going to be um it's going to be boosted pow 15s now that doesn't sound crazy scary it sounds definitely good it's something you know you're taking a pow 15 charge pow 13 charge that's going to hurt um where things get scary is that they have dual shot as a mini feat so now let's talk about the officer and the flag bearer the officer gives them reposition three and dual shot as a mini feat so there's uh 11 guns in each one of these units that becomes 22 shots if they're sacrificing movement which they can usually do with snipe uh they can usually shoot from 16 inches away and carve out a nice chunk of your army um so yeah 22 plus another 22 is 44 shots that can all be anywhere from 13 to 15 uh weapon masters on the guns really really easily at really good rat and that's that's where the crazy amount of damage comes in because it's just it's it doesn't even need prey they can do this every single turn um yeah they just become pow 13 weapon masters instead of pow 15 weapon masters with cras or whatever they can they can pump out massive amounts of damage every turn um it's not like nemo 3 where oh feet turn and now it's over no it is every freaking turn they can pump out massive amounts of damage as long as the retaliators are alive um, and Crucible Guard Infantry are alive. And they can spread really well. 
what this current iteration of the list is lacking is giveaway pieces. Everything has a job and they don't really have very many giveaway pieces. I for also forgot to mention that the uh, flags on these Crucible Guard infantry have mage static for the unit. So debuffs, um, like in my faction for Rhett, Blinding Light would be fantastic on him, but minus five range kind of sucks. Uh, my battle mages in Ron would be great for him because I could possibly kill a bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of things that would be great at killing them that I just can't really use. Uh, but yeah, that's that's more or less what happens here. They, there's all these different shot types. There's all these different things happening. It's It's got a massive amount of hit fixing and damage fixing. And then all these different shot types like shadow bind, uh, momentum, cloud removal, immunity removal, um, tough removal, grievous wounds. It's got all these things that are super relevant in our meta, super useful. And I mean, it just... It shreds medium based spam. It shreds jack spam. It shreds the things that want to get in your face and just march up the board and win. It says we have the silver bullet for that. Uh, what's going to beat this list are the assassination lists, the um, the things that are somewhat gunline resistance and can play well on scenario. There's there's a bunch of little ways to play against this, and as the list gets finely tuned, those might go away. I am very impressed with this list. So let's get into the game. Um, Crucible Guard player went first because they're going to bring Anastasia and their theme gives them plus one to go first so that's plus two to their starting roll pretty uh, pretty harsh if you ask me because that's that stick right there is where they're going to shoot me so basically as soon as I move up I'm getting shot by this list and you know I can put some things in some of their threat ranges so that they're not going to pop feet but they're still going to do a pretty good amount of damage um so yeah, I'm playing my Virus 2 list, pretty standard, two Gorgons, five Griffins, Imperatus, Discordia, Virus 2, double Arcanus, triple Arcanus, Solos, and Lanessa. So I my goal is to put things a little bit in his range, just take some shots, spread the damage, put up D-Cell, put up Kinetic Imprint, and just, uh, just weather it a little bit. I don't want to go crazy too far, I want to keep my options open, and I want to keep all my Solos safe. Maybe try and bait him into doing something dumb. Believe it or not, I'm half an inch away from just losing Imperatus this turn with that Vulcan and then having his whole gun line roll up behind the Vulcan. Um, yeah, because it has a five inch no uh, no healing. So Phoenix Protocol would just get hosed. And yeah, so that, that'd that be that'd be really, really bad. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't. Um, he just takes some shots and backs off and spreads out a little bit because he didn't want to commit. He also, he's worried about me running and engaging him. Since Griffins can run 14 and a half, 16 inch threat, he doesn't have a whole lot of unjamming pieces in this list and the Vulcan can be hard to land in places. It's one of the flaws of the list. So he just backs out half an inch out of, so this concave I have right here, he's going to make a concave going all the way around that's out of 16. So I can't just skew one side and run my Griffins into it. And that will more or less look like this. Uh, so yeah, he has backed off. Maybe he has backed off a little bit too far, but he did. So now my thing is, I'm gonna, I'm going second. So I'm gonna try and score some points, contest him, and just try and hold the middle of the board and live. I'm gonna pop feet because I can grab this middle area right here, and I can do so in such a way that. Um, I can limit his retaliation and make it so if he doesn't kill stuff, I'm going to win on scenario. And if he does kill stuff, Imperatus will get an assassination uh, possibility. So it, it should put some real pressure on him. Because he misplayed, each of these retaliators are on this in the same spot. One needs to be on one side of the board and the other needs to be on the other side of the board. Um, I'm going to put my stuff behind this house so that those retaliators can't walk and hit them with a spray. Uh, I'm going to put the griffin in there to contest the zone and be a, you know, it's going to trigger feet when they get rid of it. And then I'm going to put an Arcanus on this flag to score, put everything into this zone over here and just fill in this area and be out of the range because this unit has snipe right now. So I'm going to go the opposite direction of them. So that way they're not getting the snipe shots they want. Um, basically, only one of the units will be getting the snipe that they want and they won't be able to get dual shot and I'll be able to limit a lot of Baldwin's feet because now is pretty much the time for him to do it. I'm going to be putting a decent chunk of my army in his range, and the hammer can come down on top of me. 
So this is what it looks like here. If I had been smart, I would have played Lanissa a little bit better and put her within six of that flag. So after the Arcanus and this Griffin got shot by all these guys over here, Lanissa can go sit on that flag and score it again. <laughs> um, whoops. Anastasia is over here on the left. You can't see her, but she's going to come into my back zone to contest. And more or less, that is what is going on. Virus is on a one camp with the cell up and three shield guards. So... I'm feeling okay because the retaliators can't get to him. And at armor 22, um, only five of those guys can sacrifice movement and shoot. And I'm hoping I can I can live if he goes for the assassination run. Um, so he's got big plans of wiping me all out. And these guys on the right here, they decide to activate before Baldwin goes. Um, because they've got snipe on him and he wants to rotate snipe because he's thinking I'm going to blow apart a lot of this over here. And then, um, and then after he blows it all apart, he's going to want to rotate snipe over to these guys so that they can dig deeper if they get the option. So they walk up and this is where his plan starts falling apart. They shoot the arcanist and, um, Oh, and the retaliator came up and did oil on this griffin and this griffin over here. One of them did. And after they shot the arcanist and all these other ones were in range to just light up the griffin and murderize him, uh, the griffin moves three inches, so it's now engaged to the Vulcan. And um, he didn't do his dual shot many feet, and they all move, so they're not sacrificing movement. They're rat six, and the griffin just became defense 16. So even with two-man CRAs, um, he's still missing it on average dice needing uh, an eight. So it really it really screwed up his math. The griffin gets shot a little bit and lives. Um, and that, that really messes him up. So I was like, okay, well, not all is lost. Baldwin can still go. Baldwin goes up, rotates. Um, he, he camps a little bit. Um, and he shoots and slams the griffin out of the way over here to the side. And he's sitting right here behind the objective. Uh, he just slams out of the way. He's not going to kill it. He doesn't want to trigger the feed movement. Uh, but it's still in the zone. It's still contesting. It's awkward. And he realizes now that he's moved Baldwin to where he is, he has a problem. What he should have done is done the tactician and shot the griffin through... Uh, through the Vulcan, so that way you can stay safe way back there. But because he's so far forward, Imperatus has a path and is going to be able to get off, get to him because Linus can Hunter's Mark that objective and get to him. So now he's feeling almost like he has to commit the Vulcan. He has to get the Vulcan into the way um, and get a lot of work done. But everything's falling apart a little bit. Uh, he many he puts his feet on this Griffin and he puts prey on the Griffin and. Uh, He's he's really stuck on how the heck he's going to get out of this, how he's going to get out of this situation um, where he has to kill stuff, but the stuff he's going to be killing, because he can't get oil on anything more. Uh, he can't get oil on this pile of stuff over here, and he can't do the massive amount of damage uh, that he needed to. So it's awkward for him, and uh, he gets really frustrated super late at night. And we call it at this point um, because he's looking at if he can he can charge the Vulcan as bulldoze. He can charge it with boundless charge and it can go into this griffin, bulldoze the griffin. But then because of this flag and how Imperitus is positioned, there's nowhere for him to actually land. There is nowhere he can land where he can get to Imperitus. And he needs to get to Imperitus. Uh, he needs to shoot Imperitus dead. And Imperitus um, can keep moving around when stuff dies and just absolutely, yeah, he'll get to Baldwin. Like, even he'll, his option is running his whole entire army into my face, which is also just the end of the game for him. So, yeah, didn't really get to show what the list can do here because of the positioning, because of using terrain, um, because of just the natural parts of this. But you got to... This this Baldwin list is no joke. It, it's damage, and it's hit-fixing, and it's output is staggering and this is actually my second game against it we played a smaller game for part of the journeyman league um and he 
shot my whole army off the board in one turn. Like he also played against Rask and he shot after Rask's feet turn. He just backed everything out of the run and threat range and put a few dudes in um, to contest. And the Rask player was like, oh crap. And then the fee was over and then he shot everything dead. Um, it, it's just staggering how much those Crucible Guard infantry can get done. And if he had played this out, I still think I would have lost a lot of crap, and I still think it would be a game. Um, this unit over here on the left with many feet, and they'd probably, even without um, without uh, the thingamajigger, <laughs> I'm stuck with that. With, even without oil, they're still going to be doing decent damage to the griffins and can probably kill uh at least the griffin and this gorgon right here and then that griffin would die um and they'd be able to spread around and contest a little bit although sacrificing movement uh for dual shot and then repositioning isn't going to get them far enough in so i should my con victory condition of winning on scenario is definitely a thing so i, I guess i can see why he belt on out on it. it all i had to do was clear some zones and run arcanus onto flags because i was up two he would score one maybe another two yeah i can see why but yeah this is this is where things ended up uh let me know if you have any questions about crucible guard we're going to be seeing more of these games i'm going to be continuing to play these um there were lots of lessons learned in this game and there's lots of good information to be gleamed. Uh, I really mean it though, just because this went my way. Baldwin, he's the real deal. Uh, thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions.